Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate and the most merciful. All praises are due to Allah. We praise Him and we ask for His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Him from the evil shan, the accursed, and from the evil within our own selves, and from the evil deeds that we do. And I bear witness. There is no variety of worship except for Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. May peace and blessings be upon him and upon his followers and upon his family. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome once again to another episode of Inspirations. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inspire our hearts, to inspire us with his knowledge, with his light and make us of those who are firm in his path until the day of judgment, my brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, have you ever owned something that is very close to you? Something that you love very much? Maybe a car, maybe a house, a piece of food, a dress. Have you ever owned something and then given it away to someone? Now you're probably asking, why would I give something away that I love. But this, my brothers and sisters, is the next inner inspiration that we're learning from the Prophet The next inspiration that we'll be putting into our lives, Ithar. Ithar, my brothers and sisters, is a word that in the English language, there is no real translation. The closest thing that we can get in English is a word called altruism. How many of us have heard this word really? How many of us who've grown up speaking the English language have heard this word altruism? Really, not many of us. Because ithar is something that is missing in the Western world. And it is a characteristic of the Prophet ﷺ himself. Ithar, my brothers and sisters, or altruism, is the practice of concern for the welfare of others of a preference to oneself. I'll say it again. It is the practice of concern for the welfare of others over preference to oneself. It is the total opposite of selfishness and stinginess. This is Itha. Something that we don't really find other than with righteous believers following the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we look at all the wars, violence, and corruption in the world today, my brothers and sisters, the main culprit is what? Stinginess. The main culprit in all of these wars, some people say it's religion, some people say it's politics, but the reality is, it's selfishness. People wanting to have their pie, and not giving anyone else anything. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, taught us, my brothers and sisters, and taught us to beware of this stinginess. He said, The Prophet ﷺ said, Beware of stinginess. Beware of stinginess. For it destroyed those who came before you. It encouraged them to cut the relations. And they did. And it encouraged them to commit sin. And they did. And in another narration of the same hadith says that the Prophet said that it leads to the spilling of blood. And corruption through the earth. This is the reality. This is exactly what we see today my brothers and sisters in this world. People starting wars. People dying for the interest of those who sell weapons. They don't care about how many people die. All they care about bank accounts. How much money they will make. The Prophet ﷺ taught us the opposite of that. He taught us food for two is enough for three. And food for three is enough for four. But today, my brothers and sisters, what is happening? One person 
is eating a banquet and throwing out so much when people are outside starving. This is the reality, my brothers and sisters. It is narrated that the Prophet wasallam, the ithar of Rasulullah wasallam that he taught us was something above this level, my brothers and sisters. One day the Prophet wasallam was in Medina and someone had made the Prophet wasallam a coat. It was the middle of winter. It was cold. And the Prophet ﷺ was clearly cold, he was shivering. And a person came and gave Rasulullah ﷺ this coat. He put it on and began to wear it. And he warmed up. And it looked very beautiful on Rasulullah ﷺ. And the companions said, MashaAllah Ya Rasulullah, what a lovely coat. Can I have it? SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ he never, ever rejected a request. So he gave the person his coat. Now the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were obsessed with this other companion. For the Prophet ﷺ needed that coat. So they said to him, what is wrong with you? The Prophet ﷺ needed that coat. And you asked for him knowing that the Prophet ﷺ does not reject a request. He said, by Allah, I only ask for it because I want to be buried in it when I die. And that companion was actually buried in it when he died. That's how much he loved the Prophet ﷺ. The best example of Ithar, my brothers and sisters, can be seen when the companion made hijrah or migration to Medina. The Prophet ﷺ had been ordered to migrate to Medina. And the companions in Mecca had lost all of their belongings. Some of them, every penny that they have, every dinar, everything that they had was taken away from them. And one of the companions who went was a companion, Abdurrahman ibn Auf, who was actually one of the wealthy traders. You could say a millionaire. He was one of the wealthiest people of Mecca. And when he left Mecca to go to Medina, when he arrived in Medina, he had nothing, nothing at all except for a few coins on him. Then the believers went to Medina. The Prophet ﷺ made them brothers of each other. And Abdurrahman ibn Auf was made a brother of Sa'id bin Rabia. And Sa'id, my brothers and sisters, was also one of the wealthiest traders in Medina. And when Abdurrahman ibn Auf came to him, he said to him, I am the richest in Medina. Therefore, I'll give you half of my wealth and I have two wives. Take a look at whichever one appeals to you and when she's finished her waiting time, you can marry her. He was willing to give one of his wives even to his brother. But Abdurrahman ibn Auf didn't want that. He said to him, I don't need any of that. Just show me where the marketplace is. And Abdurrahman ibn Auf went to the marketplace and he bought a thing of butter, a tub of butter. And then he sold it to someone else and he continued until one day Abdurrahman ibn Auf became one of the richest traders in Medina. Brothers and sisters, we'll take a short break and return just after this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. رمضان المحسنين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I am Dr. Bilal Phillips and I'd like to recommend to all the viewers of Peace TV my best wishes for this month I ask Allah that he accept your fasts and your prayers and that they have had an impact in your lives, making you better people, which is the goal of Ramadan. Islamic International School presents The purpose of creation is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Precious presenters The moral excellence is one of the major objects of Islam. Promising broods 
It is the belief in Allah. The Quran is the greatest miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are neglecting the rights of other people, then you are becoming immoral. An arrogant person will never enter the Jannah. Death is not defined as nation. Adding role models. Ekabraham duty anaste. Bhagwan eki hai. Dursa nahi hai. Nahi hai, nahi hai. Sarabi nahi hai. Watch Dies of Islamic International School in Trendsetters tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3 a.m. in India on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, leading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? It's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch truth fail and lies perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Welcome back, my brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, we're learning about ithar. Ithar, something that has no equivalent in the English language. Giving preference to others over self when that person is in need. The best example of ithar, my brothers and sisters, can be seen when the companions from Mecca made hijrah or migration to Medina. The Prophet sallallahu he was had been ordered to migrate to Medina and the companions in Mecca had lost all of their belongings some of them every penny that they had everything that they had was taken away from them and one of the companions who went was a companion Abdurrahman ibn Auf who was actually one of the wealthy traders you could say a millionaire he was one of the wealthiest people of Mecca and when he left Mecca to go to Medina, so when he arrived in Medina, he had nothing. Nothing at all except for maybe coins on him. When the believers went to Medina, the Prophet ﷺ made them brothers of each other. And Abdurrahman ibn Auf was made a brother of Sayyid bin Rabia. And Said, my brothers and sisters, was also one of the wealthiest traders in Medina. And when Abdurrahman ibn Auf came to him, he said to him, I am the richest trader in Medina. Therefore, I will give you half of my wealth, and I have two wives. Take a look at whichever one appeals to you, and when she's finished her waiting time, you can marry her. He was willing to give one of his wives even to his brother. But Abdurrahman ibn Auf, he didn't want that. He said to him, I don't need any of that. Just show me where the marketplace is. And Abdurrahman ibn Auf went to the marketplace and he bought a thing of butter, a tub of butter. And then he sold it to someone else. He continued until one day Abdurrahman ibn Auf became one of the richest traders in Medina. And we saw that the companions were those who had stinginess in their heart. The Ansar, the helpers, when the people of Mecca came to them, the Muhajirun, they treated them with open arms. And they gave them whatever they could, even wanting to give their own wives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the verse of the Qur'an, my brothers and sisters, about the Ansar and the Muhajirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, and those who were settled in Medina, and adopted the faith before them. They loved those who immigrated to them. 
and find not any want in their breasts of what the immigrants were given, but give preference over themselves, even though they are in reservation. And whoever is protected from stinginess, or whoever protects his soul from stinginess, it is those who will be the successful. This verse, my brothers and sisters, showing that the Sahaba had no stinginess in their hearts. In fact, it was nothing to give another companion part of his wealth or some of his wealth. They worked together. Brothers, they had no malice in their hearts towards each other. Look at us today. If only we could press this part of the religion, ethar, then inshallah, inshallah, we may just find peace amongst us, brothers. In another hadith, my brothers and sisters, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he asked for some food. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent his servant to the house and asked if there was any food. But there was no food in the house. So the Prophet ﷺ told them and called out to the people and said, Who will look after my guest in the home? One of the companions said, I Rasulullah. So he took him to his house and he sat him down in his lounge room and said to relax. And he went to his wife and asked his wife, Do we have any food? Nothing. She will only have enough for the children. And that's all we have. So the companion then, he said to his wife, right, we will cook the food of the children and you keep them busy so that they don't feel hungry and then put them to sleep. And then when I give the call, you turn the lights out, put the food. So the wife agreed to the plan. And she put the children to sleep. The food was cooked and the guest was there. And when he gave the call, she turned off and she came and she brought the food. She put the food down and the companion and the guest both sat down. The guest began to eat. And the companion of the Prophet wasallam also began to pretend to eat. He was pretending to eat, making the sounds of eating. And the guest filled his stomach. He drank some water and he was fine. Then he went back the next day to the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu began to laugh. He was informed by the angels what had happened. He said, Allah is surprised and happy with that which you and your wife did last night. This is the level of iqtar that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu reached, my brothers and sisters. Imagine if we can get through this. Imagine if we can imply this part of the religion to our lives, my brothers and sisters. We won't see poor people on the streets. We won't see begging. We won't see people being arrogant, brothers and sisters. Imagine in the world. Imagine if this was introduced into the world. Imagine how the world would be a place of calmness, a place of happiness. There would be no hasad, no malice towards each other. Ah, my brothers and sisters, we have left this akhlaq of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is something that we need to put into our lives, every single one of us. And beginning with myself, ithar, or altruism, as they call it in the West. But altruism is not even the same. It is not giving preference over oneself. It is just helping people. But we're not talking about helping people here. We're talking about giving preference over oneself. And brothers and sisters, one of the stories of Ithar that touched my heart from the believers was a story of a family that I heard of when I was in Turkey. And this family lived out about 300 kilometers away from Istanbul, out in the, in the bush, in the forest. And one day there was a couple who were not even Muslim, not Muslims. They were walking and they missed the last bus going back to Istanbul. They began to panic. They'd been walking around everywhere. What are we going to do? 
How are we going to get home? It was cold the middle of winter and anyone who's lived in Turkey in the middle of winter knows the freezing cold, the snow. Wallahi, wallahi, it is a place where you do not want to be. Out in the open all night in the middle of winter. But these people were lost, they had nowhere to go. Until an old man, an old man who was wearing the quba, the hat, he saw them and with the little English that he had, he invited them to his house. He told them that there is no more buses coming. So you must come and stay at my house, we will look after you. If he didn't, they would die. So he took them to his house and his wife prepared the room. His house was small, his house was humble. In fact, one or two rooms and a bathroom. He turned on the heaters and his wife prepared some food, some pidi or lahmajun that they have there, which is like a pizza or bread. And some tea and he gave it to his guests. They became warm and happy. And then the man said, you must go to sleep and wake up in the morning and catch the bus home. So the people spent the night in his house, sleeping, warm, happy, because of the event that this person did for them. And then at the time of Fajr, the adhan sounded. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. The man awoke. It's not even Muslim. The man woke up to the sound of the adhan. He began to think about things. He began to remember where he was and he opened the door and looked out the door and he saw. He saw the man with his wife in the garage. In the garage. All they had was a small fire and their blankets. They spent the whole night out there in the cold. Why they gave this guest, this visitor, someone who they didn't even know. In fact, this person wasn't even Muslim. Gave him the best treatment. And him and his wife slept in the garage. Upon this, the man began to think. And he began to wonder why would he do such a thing. The man came in. And the foreigner got ready and then he left. He caught his bus and he left back to Istanbul. Life went on. Three months passed, my brothers and sisters. Three months. And the man was just living his life, the old Muslim man. Until one day, a letter came to the door. He opened the letter and it read, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. It was from the person that had stayed at his house. He understood now why he did it to him, why he helped him in a time of need, because this is what our religion teaches us. This is what our religion encourages us. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward Sheikh, that old man, for what he did, guiding someone to Islam. It might just be that small deed that we do, that guides someone to Islam, that allows them to know about the beauty of this religion. Wallahi, this inspiration of ithar is something that every single one of us have to put into our lives, my brothers and sisters. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bottom of my heart, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, islah qulubana, fix our hearts, Ya Allah. Make us of those who are on the right path, Ya Allah. Put mercy in our hearts, Ya Allah. Allow us to help the people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. That's all we have time for, my brothers and sisters. But remember, remember to put this into your life this week. Keep on the path that is loved by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is something that is missing in this world. But if we all try to fight our then we may just be able to do it, my brothers and sisters.
I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to keep us on the path. And that's all we have time for today, my brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.